In Cross River State, the issue of zoning causes division among stakeholders as 2023 gubernatorial elections draw near. And the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says they might have to postpone the 2023 elections if President Muhammad Buhari fails to sign the reworked Electoral Amendment Act bill by Tuesday. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Cole. The build-up to the governorship race in Cross River State is generating diverse interest among stakeholders across party lines. This is in view of the realignment of interests probably caused by the defection of politicians between political parties. The All Progressive Congress APC seems to have resolved the controversy about its zoning agreement as the state governor, Ben Ayade, uh, stated that the rotational principle in the state would be retained. On the part of the People's Democratic Party PDP, its state chairman, Venetius Ikim, disclosed that the party will decide on where to zone its governorship ticket to at the appropriate time. In addition, stakeholders in Cross River State have published the Calabar Declaration, advocating for power to return to the southern part of the state. Well, joining us to discuss this is the All Progressive Congress um, chairman in the state. I'm talking about Alphonsus Eber. Thank you very much, Mr. Eber, for joining us. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Good evening, Nigerians. All right. Also to be joining us later will be the P People's Democratic Party state chairman, uh, Mr. Vanasha Sikim. But I'm going to start with you, Mr. Eber. Um, let us look at the issue because, of course, you are the party chairman and you are the ruling party in Cross River State. Um, we have heard that the governor has said that the zoning and the rotational government will stand. Is this the position of every single person within the APC or are there people who are against it? Thank you. To answer your question directly, Congruity of opinion does not exist in human life. When a question is asked in a gathering of about 10, is everybody in support of this? You will find at least a dissenting voice. So to say whether everybody in Cross River State agrees with the issue of zoning as postulated by His Excellency and several opinion leaders in Cross River State, I will only answer you by saying that majority of Cross Riverians are in agreement with that position. I sit down here as Alphonsus Oga Eba Esquire, not first as a decision of the party yet, but as Alphonsus Oga Eba Esquire, I believe in zoning because I am a product of zoning. And because I, my whole political life from 1999, when this republic started, zoning was an integral part of the party where I belong. And zoning also exists in the party where I am now. So to say and to answer your question, majority of Cross-Variants are in agreement with the position of the governor for power to rotate among the three senatorial districts. And for 2023, that position that power should go to the south stands very popular and acceptable by almost all, except a few who may have their good reasons based on perhaps their own ambition too. There are a lot of people who are saying that um, the APC is towing the line of zoning because they want to retain the seat of the governor, uh, being that recently the governor moved from the PDP to the APC. Uh, and of course, he does not want to lose that power that he has over, um, you know, the governorship seat and of course, the power that he has in the state, being that the state is led by the APC as we speak. Is there any truth to that? 
the decision of the governor calls only a reflection of who the governor is, a man of integrity, a man of fidelity. I recall in 2019, I was among the team of His Excellency that went before the Southern Senatorial District leaders called the Seven Alive Movement. We had that meeting in High Chief Etienne Asukwa Ekpanyong house. The who is who in the politics across the state from the south across party line gathered and the governor made a statement that in his own view he is here before the southern senatorial district to ask for their support to enable him complete his remaining four years tenure so that at the end of 2023 power will return back to the South. Knowing that in 1999, His Excellency Donald Duke was governor till 2007. And in 2007 to 2015, His Excellency Senator Lee Limoke was governor. And now that he has been governor from 2015 to expire in 2023, power ordinary should return to where it starts. To him, that is an ordinary, natural, free flow, because it is not just about rotation. The consideration of a senatorial district, which has waited for 16 years, should know that after 16 years, power will come to my district. To us, what that has achieved is that it has kept political harmony across the state. It has reduced social and political tension. It has reduced financial recklessness because you do not need to jump into the contest when you know that a time for you will come. Like people were saying that this thing can start from the north, knowing that everybody has had it. And somebody asked me, you are one person the governor likes so much. He stood by you to become state chairman of party. Don't you think it's an opportunity for you to accept that so I can start from you? Okay. I said, if there's anything I have learned from the governor, in addition to my natural innate, is not to be greedy, it's not to be selfish. I would not accept, even if the governorship ticket is thrown on me, the natural thing is I should go back to the South. Okay. And I think that is the position that is popular. It has to do with the fidelity of the governor and not certain sentimental interest or political underlining, as you have just asserted. Okay. Well, we're being joined by the PDP state chairman in Cross River, um, Mr. Vinash Ike. Mr. Ike, thank you very much for joining us. Mr. Ike, can you hear me? Yeah. Great. Um, well, I, I'd like to hear from the PDP on the issue of zoning, being that there's been some, um, a lot of people within the party, in fact, the party has been divided uh, between two different people on the issue of zoning. Uh, where does the PDP in Cross River State stand as to the power shift come 2023? Um, is zoning on the table or is it to be jettisoned as some politicians within the party have said? I'm struggling. Hello? I'm hearing very well. But at least I could hear you say things like zoning and whether it's on the table. Yes. I think I can just say that's what you're talking about. Yes. Uh, for us, everything is on the table, but it just remains that we have not been practicing zoning in that sense. In which you are saying, when we are starting, we must update it to meet people and people. That's not what we did before, and that's not what we are about to do. But again, it's subject to the decisions of the appropriate. Uh, uh, Mr. Kim, I think that we're having connection issues with you. Um, can you can you again say what you just said? You're saying that you have not necessarily practiced zoning in the sense that we are looking at it from. What sense do you think that we're looking at it from? And what kind of zoning has the PDP in Cross River State been practicing? That who practices it? Well, I'm asking, you said you're not practicing zoning or rather you're not looking at zoning the way we're looking at it. So I'm asking, what type of zoning has the PDP in Cross River been doing? Yeah, yeah. What we what we have been doing is that after every election, when a candidate emerges from a particular zone, 
we eliminate that zone for the next election. That's how we arrived at a point where we were able to do each zone for eight years to where we are. And I think that it, it worked for us. So there is not, there shouldn't be any apprehension about whether we are now throwing away zoning or not. So that's the sense in which we applied zoning. We never sat down at any point and said, uh, yeah, this time when he said he's going to the south, the next time he's going to central, and then the last time he came to the north. No, that's not what happened. Donald won and defeated Tano Agabi in a fair and three primaries went ahead to win the elections. He served two terms. Senator Imoke contested with uh, Walter Energy, who was deputy to Donald Duke, and from the north, he defeated him and he became. And there was only the north left. So it was only fair to say, okay, the north. There was no point for anybody else with the north. So that's, that's the sense in which I mean that we have been practicing zoning. So if, for instance, we go for the next round and a candidate emerges uh, from the south or maybe from central, because the north is actually not in the race, we can now say, okay, that south or north I mean, or central that took it this time has been eliminated when we are going for the next round. Then there will be two, two to contest. Mm -hmm. If they contest and one again wins, they, that one is eliminated. Then there will remain only one. And then there'll be no need for anybody to contest with them. So that's the point it, this, and sense in which we practice zoning. So I, we are going to disenfranchise anybody from contesting the basis of so-called zoning is not a, the sense in which we understand it. Okay. But again, every party can practice it the, the way that it understands. All right, you were quoted to say that... Um zoning, um, all right, that Governor Ayade, apparently because the governor has taken a position on the issue of zoning and he's saying that it needs to, ticket needs to go to the south. You were quoted to say that his position was unrealistic um, and he was not being um, realistic with the issue of zoning. Um, as opposed to what you have just said to me that, you know, whoever wins is practically eliminated and that's how the turns are being taken. But this is, as, this is being opposed by so many people, and this has led to the Calabar Declaration, where they're saying parties who are not going to field um, candidates from the South will not get any bulk votes. What's your reaction to that? Honestly, I'm struggling to hear you. Uh, but did you hear but, me when I said, uh, what I said about the uh, Calabar Declaration? The fact that these people have said or well, they've come to an agreement, and these are people who are from the southern senatorial districts, most especially yeah. okay. politicians. Okay. They're okay. saying yeah. Yeah. a bulk me, vote will not be given to a political party who does not field a candidate from the southern senatorial district. I'm not in APC. I don't know whether you're talking about APC I'm talking or about the Calabar the Declaration. These are people from the southern yeah. senatorial districts, course, whether the APC people or PDP. The people of Calabar are entitled to agitate for what they want, agitate for their interests. And they're entitled to that, absolutely. It's uh, democracy. Even the people from the north, where are they come from, are entitled to agitate if they want. Now, when the delegates are approaching that, it remains for them to be influenced by those agitations or the sense in which they are preaching their equity or whatever you call it. Now, now you cannot understand like what the governor said. I can imperial pronounce from the beginning that you have zoned to the south, thereby disenfranchising everyone who may have had an interest to contest. That is the antithesis of democracy. People should have a right to choose. They can even decide to choose from where the present government comes from because it's democracy. It has happened some elsewhere in, uh, in Nigeria. And nothing says it can happen in, in, anywhere else. Hmm. So uh, I don't understand this uh, uh, hanging on to the strings of zoning in democracy. It, it doesn't work that way. Interesting. Now, there are also people who have said that both the APC, the PDP, are taking these stands, and the different stands that you, your parties are taking is because of selfish reasons and not necessarily uh, in a democratic way that would benefit the average Koshevarian. 
That's not me speaking. But let me push you first, Mr. Ikem, before I go back to Ms. Deba. Um, you have said, uh, or people have quoted um, to say that, have been quoted to say that the reason why the PDP is taking this stand is because there is a certain candidate that they want to favor um, within the party. No, absolutely no, that's not correct. The position I have consistently advocated on this the state executive is that we will provide a level playing field for everybody who wants to aspire and who wants to contest. And that is not only for the governorship election. That goes for all elective positions. That is our position. Except until such a time that, like I said, if the appropriate organs of a party decide that we can uh, formulate an alternative strategy that could win us election, fine and good. But through our 22 or so year history, through the three cycles of elections we have had, we have always contested, except the last one, when only the Northern Territorial District was left. That is our history. You can go to the records and check it. So I don't know why we are suddenly trying to change the rules of the game, maybe because we are afraid of a certain candidate in the, in the race. But I, I don't see why we should be on, on, unnecessarily Who's that certain candidate that would be more... Who, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to understand. Are, are you trying to say that there are candidates within the Southern Central District that are not good enough to run the state? No, or no, is I'm there not, a very special person of, within the party the the that everyone should be afraid of? I'm saying that the electorate will decide on the basis of whatever criteria they, pick, if they choose to elect a, a, a candidate for the party as flag bearer. But what baffles me is that we are not challenging this when we talk about every other election. Because this goes for all elections. We have people who are serving five times in the National Assembly, three times in the National Assembly. All these decisions too are subject to zoning. But they conveniently remember zoning only with respect to the ownership. Mr. Kim, are you still there? I'm going to throw this back to um, the APC State Chairman. Mr. Eba, are you still there? Let's throw back um, this to you. You've heard everything that the PDP State Chairman has said concerning the party, that the governor is acting like an emperor and deciding to um, dictate what should be the modus operandi in picking who should run as governor across boards. It is unfortunate when an adult goes berserk by expressing his verbal dissent. Who is acting like an emperor? Anyway, it's, it's not surprising because um, Venashu Zikem was bought for a price to come and spew such kind of gibberish on national television. You're making allegations it's that not, we do not, not have proof to. Were you in the room where he was bought for a price? And what price I was he I do not know for? why you should call a governor who only wanted to rely and stand by what he said in 2019 to be called an emperor. If there's any emperor, it's the governor that bought him for a price from River State, and he should know that very well. But to the question of what we are saying, Section 7 of the PDP Constitution is very clear on the issue of zoning. Article 21, Roman figure 4 of the APC Constitution is clear on zoning. Section 14, subsection 3 of the Constitution of Nigeria is clear on the issue of federal character. My dear sister, you can only place something on something, and that is where it will stand. If you come by the sentiments that does not hold water, you are bound to give this kind of falsity and phantomagorical issues like uh, the young man has explained. In 2014, 2015, in Cross River State, PDP agreed on the issue of zoning. That was because the other two senatorial districts had previously produced governors for the state. And you're speaking because you used they, to be a member of the PDP? I was a member of the PDP. Great. And I cannot sit down on national television and tell the kind of lies that that man is saying, but it's it's not surprising because when you are lacking in character, 
Okay. That is what you do. Just, just do not try to attack his personality. And let's, let's I'm not him... attacking. He called my governor an emperor. A man without character should not sit on national television and call a governor an emperor because we know who the emperor is in this country, and that is Governor Wiki. So you should not sit on national television and call my governor well, an emperor. Well, Governor Wiki, uh, the uh, last time I checked, uh, Governor Wiki is uh, the governor of River State and not the governor of Cross River. That is the man that him. I think I want... Hold on, television. hold on, Mr. Eba. It's just hold on. Kind of hold on, Mr. Eba. Let me bring in yeah, Vinashis because... You're making claims that... Uh... Go, go ahead, go ahead, Mr. Ikem. I'd like to hear from Vinashis, uh, because you've made an allegation that the governor of another state is controlling the PDP in Cross River. Yeah, you don't, you don't, yes. you don't know anything about yeah. it. About running a political party, what position have you ever heard in the no, 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 Mr. Kim, hold on. I, I, I need you to respond. No, 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 no attacking. Hold on. I need you if to you respond to, to those claims. But that character, zoning, and all that means you're not saying you're not making any sense. I'm sure you were trying to talk to me, not Bernard. Let me answer what you asked me, please. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Kim. Uh, uh, can you hear me? I want to ask again. He's moderator, saying, moderator, uh, Mr. Kim, can I you listen to me? To, I want to ask you the question again in I, case you didn't hear me. He's claiming that your party is being run by the governor of another state. And I find that very uh, that claim, uh, claim as spurious as anything else. But then I want to hear from you why a member of the APC, in fact, the party chairman, of the APC in your state would be presuming or making such an assumption on national TV that Governor Wike is running the PDP in Cross River State. Ms. Kim, can you hear me? Is that for me? Yes, please. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear the question. I'll take it again. Please listen. He yes. has said that your party is being run by the governor of River State. And he's saying that you have been bought for a price by that same governor. I find that very disturbing. But I'd like to hear from you. You see, I, I don't want to dignify such uncouth talk with any response. Uh, if a governor attends an event, a political party event in a state, that means he's running a party in that state. That's why I say the man does not know anything about how a party is or how they operate. Uh, they run their worship of governor, worship of personalities in what they call loyalty. Uh, that is not what we call democracy. Uh, that is why they will run away from PDP to wherever they conquer. For those who stay back in PDP, we are, dem we are Democrats. Uh, if they could run away from PDP, like he was, he was my contender for this position, they had to run away with the governor to go and uh, capture another party. What we have in PDP cross river state is robust democracy. As we speak, they don't even allow aspirants to come out to contest elections on their platform. The only viable platform, robust elections, con contestations are going on is the PDP in cross river state because we have allowed a level playing field for everybody to contest. While they sit there and wait for their emperor to dictate to them when to do and where to zone what, we are abusing with the people, allowing everybody to contest so that he can get the support of party members across the state. That is how democracies are run. That is how democratic parties are run. Okay. Let's move away from the issue of zoning now. Mr. Eba, this question is for you. Um, there was a youth summit that held in the state over the weekend. It was a very big event. Um, but then, of course, you got a lot of people talking. When we saw the advertorial for that event, it was Cross River Youth Summit. But then many people who would have loved to attend the event saw the APC plastered all over the event um, venue, the stage. We saw people wearing, dressed in uniforms with Ayade and talking about the APC. So I just want you to clarify, was that an APC Youth Summit or was it a Cross River State Youth Summit? Please explain to us what that was. Is that for me? No, 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 it's for Mr. Eba. A ruling party. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. When a ruling party is in a state and you have under...
Mr. Eba, are you still there? I think we have a connection. No, do not operate on Mr. Eba, are you still there? Can you hear me? I can hear you very well. Can you Go hear ahead. me? We lost you for a second. Can you hear me? All right, I, I'm, I'm going to throw the same question to Missy e. Kim. Um, we, we saw the event, I'm sure you saw the event. It was a youth summit for young people, obviously, in the state. But then there were people who were worried about the fact that it became an APC event, which somewhat had made people who were not necessarily members of the APC who wanted to attend to take a step back. Um, do you care to comment? Well, just uh, some of the misinformation and um, these great cool things they are doing in the state out of desperation to sustain their very failing party. They claim that they had a cross river state youth summit. When we decided to have our own event, which was a flag of us, they now decided that what they had was an APC youth summit and that we should not have two political party events at the same time in the city of Calabar because it will bring conflict. It was on the basis of that they used the police to attempt to frustrate our flag up. When I spoke to the Commission of Police, I made it very clear that the summit that he was claiming to be an APC uh, occasion was actually a bipartisan, multipartisan occasion. How suddenly did it become an APC summit? So I'm sure that you would with dismay as they try to turn what was a cross river youth summit into suddenly becoming an APC summit. But the whole idea was orchestrated to make it look like a party event so that they could stop PDP from holding their flag up rally that was built for that day. But would the commissioner of police had himself approved the four security agencies have been approached and written to. And so you can see the desperation with which they are trying to run their failing party. We are not bothered. We know that the people are with us. And we demonstrated it on that day with people's power. They couldn't stop us from doing our rally. And we had a massively attended successful rally. And today, their problem now is that His Excellency Governor Ewike, who was invited, attended, and presented flags to our flag bearers. To them, that means Ewike is running cross the state. It's well, um, th there are people who wondered also why a governor would be at a local government congress where it was not necessarily a state primary or anything. Um, they were wondering why there was a governor at that event. Why, why was Governor Wike even there in the first instance? Out of curiosity. The election, the election is critical to us. You know, you know the circumstance of the party in Trotsky. A party that has won all its major elections and only made a mistake, a sad mistake, thief, character as his partner, and then he runs away with our mandate. We are working hard and doing everything possible to reclaim our state. The language for us is reclaiming Trotsky. And so, what and, we and, so do, and, and so, reclaiming Trotsky state, you could not do that with. The past two governors you had, the, the former governor, Donald Duke, uh, Senator Lea Limoku, and all the P PDP oh, the, stalwarts. You needed a governor. Was from, no, so, he yes, I know. I know. He had something else doing. I know. But, but, but I'm saying, why did you need yes. a state governor at that event? Did you, what statements were you trying to make with that well, state governor? And this is South South Zone. He has been inviting people to river states from across the country to commission projects. Are you not aware? When did this country become divided such that you cannot go to attend a political event in another state or zone? I don't understand what that means. Interesting. It was not the only one expected. We were expecting of our If you look at our invitations, look at our, our uh, billboards and platforms. We're expecting of our Trump. We're expecting of our Emmanuel Ludum. Okay. We were expecting of our Wicked. Okay. Luckily, only he was able to turn up. Hello. All right. We're not I, supposed to celebrate that. Okay, let me go back to Mr. Eba. We lost him for a bit, but I think he's back. Mr. Eba, can you hear me?
Thank you very much. I hope you did not bring me just to listen to Venashi's. Well, you, you went out for a while and we were trying to get you back. No, so you I asked you a question me? and I want to ask that question again. The event yes. that we saw was supposed to be a Cross River Youth Summit. Somewhere along the line, we saw a lot of APC flyers, APC flags, people wearing Ayade um, T-shirts and, and all of those things, which also made people wonder, people who would have wanted to be part of that event, but for, for political reasons, took a step back. So I want to ask you, what was the idea behind this youth summit and what were you trying to achieve? At what point did it become a political rally? It was Cross River State Youth Summit. Okay. And don't forget, perhaps the one you saw was when we came live at about 3 p.m., that youth summit started at about 11 o'clock, where cross riverians across party lines, excluding the PDP alone, because what the PDP decided to well, do... Well, we have pictures and videos from that event, and that's what I'm making reference to. That is I'd what like I'm explaining to, to you. Up. We have pictures showing the youth with PDP flags. With We saw videos of trumpeters and musicians wearing the Ayade t-shirt and PDP the APC flags, logo flags. on it. So if PDP that was flags. a youth summit, for example, and I'm from APGA, for example, and I wanted to yes. a, a, in, be a part of the Cross River Youth Summit, and then I go there yes. and it's APC all over the place, why would you think I would want to step into that event? It was a program meant for all youths. What? I was in that program. I was there as chairman of APC, and I went there with several thousands of APC people to say thank you to the governor. People from other political parties were there. If you of were PDP, thinking about the average cross Rivarian who was a young person and you were trying to reach out to them, why did you yes. need to make it at some point become a, an APC event? I'm still asking that question. Why did, was there a need for it because to become an APC, APC event? It is the dominant political party in Cross River so, State. So because it's the in dominant the political party, every listen, other party is listen, not welcomed. What if the, the people of the of PDP, the APGA, or Labour Party showed up with their own flags because it's a youth summit and, you know, they're also a party. Yes. They feel that it's in dominant. In the garden why of couldn't every they have 100 in? youth you find in Cross River State, and don't forget, when the governor was giving appointments, when the governor was putting food on the table for people, he did not just do it for APC. He did it for other political parties, including people in PDP. So they came in their really? different colors to say thank you after holding that summit. And what was the target of the summit? To say we are saying no to the interference of some emperors from some state importing political cannibalism into crossing our state. Don't forget, on the third day of February, PDP had a primary, which resulted in bloodshed. Don't forget, on the fifth day of September 2020, we lost lives in Cross River State. On what does this of have PDP to primary. do with the question that and I'm asking you? I'm sorry, you're to diverting say, oh. to something else. I'm bringing you back again. I'll ask. The PDP chairman is on the phone. He just said that they had their state um, local government congress on the same day. And before then, they had gone to the uh, commissioner of police and informed him that they were going to have this event at the sports club on the Maritala Mohammed Highway. But then in, on the day of the said event, the commissioner of police says, well, you can't have two political events side by side, meaning that your event was a purely political event for the APC. Please help me understand no, no, no. at what Get point this well. changed from a youth well. summit to a, youth an summit APC that was event. to hold in Cross River State was advertised as early as January. In January, even when INEC had not released the timetable for political party activities. So please get it very right. What the commissioner of police decided to do was to forestall crisis. When he saw the number of banners, when he saw the number of pictures, of vehicles that were coming but into you just town. told me sir that this was not a political event it was an event for cross revering no, youth yes, no, no, but please, because your don't party is the dominant me. party that's why your flags were there don't right quote me it was a summit of all youths in cross river state exactly i am a youth and I came with over 10,000 youth from APC exactly. to be part of that rally. So how did the commissioner of police get to the get the information that there were two political events when you had 
just a youth summit while the PDP was having their local government congress. That's one political event and another event for young people. The young people political activities was dominated by APC. The commission of police that had already given approval right. prior to the holding of their rally discovered that Calabar cannot host two political rallies in his own estimation, even though it was meant to be a like youth speak, summit. Uh, but I said it was heavily dominated by APC. But why did the PDP choose to do their rally in Calabar? Even when they know that the by-election flag off was meant to be in Akpa with your state constituency in yeah. Ogojayala. But they went to the Multala Mohammed Highway with a plan to block the highway so that delegates that were coming from the central and the northern part of Kosovo State will not be able to enter into the stadium. I'm sorry, but uh, shame on how them. would they block uh, the express when the sports club is not on the highway? It's the sports the club highway. is by the highway, please. Unfortunately, the sports club is by the highway. It's by the Muritala Mohammed Highway. It was blocked until the police intervened and came with an armored personnel carrier. And they were jumping through the fence, even when the place was barricaded. But okay. I'm not here to speak for the police. The okay. police should take their action. But this is a signal to the Inspector General of Police, to the Chief of Army Staff, to heads of all security agencies, that these lazy people are not prepared for election. All right. we you have, can imagine, we have went to on rally today in Ukele, the DSS cautioned them that our campaign has been on for more than one week. Okay. They came and fixed the timetable to conflict with our own we have to campaign go. day today in Ukele. But I have been cautioning my people, saying, please, when they come with trouble, just avoid them. Because we okay. are waiting for the 26th of this month okay. to know who, which party is the party to rely on the cross party. Okay. And we put them to shame because 26 is just by we the corner. We have to go, Mr. Eber. <laughs> Uh, uh, this this conversation has to continue some other the time. Of this election. Unfortunately, is time is not state. on our side. And apologies. On security agencies. Apologies because we have had many breaks from you because of the internet connection, but we want to thank you. Time is not our friend. Vinash Sikem is the state chairman of the People's Democratic Party. Alphonsus Eba, he's uh, the chairman for the Crosby State All Progressive Congress. Thank you so much for speaking with us, gentlemen. Unfortunately, we have to go now. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, we discuss how the possible refusal of President Buhari to assent to the amendment, uh, amended Electoral Act bill may spell um, a later time for the elections for 2023. We'll talk about it after this break. <laughs>